Jeep has expanded their lineup over the last couple of years with the addition of a full-size Jeep called the Commander and two compact Jeeps called the Compass and the Patriot. And of course, there's the tried and true midsize SUV, the Jeep Grand Cherokee. But the Jeep Liberty that was introduced in 2002 never really replaced that boxy square utility Jeep, the Cherokee, that so many people loved. Now for 2008, the Liberty is bigger than the original, maybe giving Jeep the rugged, less expensive Jeep they lost with the Cherokee without being a cute Ute. Now this Jeep Liberty is built in the same factory on the same platform as the Dodge Nitro. And from a distance, if you, if you kind of squint, you can see the resemblance. But this new Jeep Liberty definitely draws more styling cues from the full-size Commander than it does from the previous Liberty. There are three different versions of the Liberty. The basic sport isn't so basic, with standard four-wheel drive, curtain airbags, stability control, traction control, four-wheel disc brakes, and a starting price of $26,945. The North Edition starts at $27,895 and includes a few convenience features. The Limited gets bigger 17-inch wheels, heated seats, better stereo, and starts at $32,045. For a full list of specs, go to drivingtelevision.com. The interior of the Liberty has what you'd expect from a true utility vehicle. It's very basic in here. The gauges are easy to read. The dials are very simple. The one thing I do like, though, is they, they've made the rotary dials for the heat have a very smooth quality feel, which I do like. Now, I call an interior like this plastic fantastic. It has a lot of this inexpensive, hard plastic that I really rip on most times. But I'm going to cut this vehicle some slack because people that actually buy a vehicle like this might use it for off-road purposes, so at least it'll be easy to clean up. Since the new Liberty is longer, the rear passengers get more legroom and the cargo area is bigger. Headroom has never been a problem with the Liberty, but the driver's seat is high off the floor, so shorter drivers might feel like their legs are hanging over the edge. Well, the Liberty has updated styling, which is attractive. It's bigger on the inside. Most people will welcome that. And I do find the seats comfortable. But it's what you can't see that impresses me most. Now, it doesn't matter which Liberty you get, the Sport, the North, or the Limited. Each one comes with the same 3.7 liter V6. It has 210 horsepower, but even more torque at 235 pound-feet. Now, what's interesting about the Jeep is that when you're not in four-wheel drive, the power is just going to the rear wheels. It's unlike many all-wheel drive vehicles where the power might be going, say, just to the front wheels and only sends power to the back for more traction. If you want more traction with the Liberty, you have to manually shift the power to four-wheel on the center console. And i got to tell you, when you put your foot into this V6, it pulls away and it passes with authority. The base transmission is a six-speed manual, which is unique. Most vehicles in this class are not offered with a manual at all. The automatic is a four-speed unit. The Liberty is what's called trail-rated, meaning it can tackle off-road duties with confidence. Or can it? When we get into trouble like this, we always count on one guy, and his name is Truck Guy, Ian Harwood. Here comes the cavalry and his over-equipped Hummer. Is Ian making up for some kind of shortcoming? Well, who would think that Ian would get stuck? Anyway, we found out that sometimes bigger isn't better. Lucky for us, Truck Guy has other Truck Guy friends. And they might be a little bit smarter because they stayed on the road to help pull us out. In the end, we discovered that unless you're driving a swamp buggy, nothing was going to get through this suit. Now here's something to keep in mind. If you have a truck guy friend, make sure you store his number on your speed dial. Now, where were we? The four-wheel drive system is easy to operate in the center console by choosing either two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive high, and four-wheel drive low. The Liberty is also equipped with hill start assist when driving with the manual transmission. This stops the Liberty from rolling backwards. And it can also be equipped with hill descent to let the vehicle creep down steep hills without any assist. One thing to keep in mind, the four-wheel drive system is meant for off-road or snowy conditions because it splits the torque front to back. So when turning the four-wheel drive system, it can bind up. It is not to be used on dry pavement. For that type of driving, an all-wheel drive vehicle might be a better fit. 
Now, we've already mentioned that this vehicle is based on the same platform as the Dodge Nitro. And when we had that vehicle on the show, I really wasn't that impressed. I found the suspension too soft. The cornering was subprime. It just felt something to be desired. Well, Jeep has done a great job of taking essentially the same platform and upgrading the suspension. So you do get some feedback to the driver. It corners better. Now, keep in mind, it is an SUV, so it's not going to corner like a sports car. It has an amazing turning radius. You can turn this thing on a dime, and the steering is light and very easy to maneuver. When you're driving along the open road, it's very comfortable and smooth and has quite refined manners. You forget that this is a vehicle basically made to go off-road. So it has the ruggedness and the looks that I think men will like, but it also has the refinement that I think will appeal to women. It looks like Jeep has their basic, inexpensive SUV back. This definitely does remind me of the old Cherokee. It's for people who want sort of a midsize or compact SUV, but they don't want to have to go into a Jeep Grand Cherokee. It has the looks and the ruggedness people expect from Jeep, but it also has a level of sophistication in the ride that some people might not expect. For complete specs, go to our website at drivingtelevision.com.